All the drama of the Giro d'Italia is live and on demand each day on GCN+. Plus. Another day and more rain, I'm afraid. The longest day of the Giro d'Italia and a longer day for some teams. It was hard work for Sudal Quickstep, having to say goodbye to four riders, but there were good spirits in other camps. Despite the fact that eight in total would not start, the COVID pandemic still going in professional cycling. 219 kilometers, the longest stage of the Giro d'Italia taking in three regions, leaving Tuscany and Camaiore, going to Liguria and finishing Piemonte, a finish in Tortona, of course, the city synonymous with the late, great Fausto Coppi. Stage 11 of the Giro halfway through and six riders made it into the break of the day. Only three or four kilometres were required to get the right ingredients. Those behind in sprint teams were determined to make this a day for the fast finishers. Aston for Mark Cavendish, Trek riding for Mars Pedersen, and Movistar for Fernando Gavidia contributing to the early pace setting as they tried to set up a sprint. The intermediate sprint, the break had their fun, and Jonathan Milan was looking strong, beating Mars Pedersen to more points in the Maglia Ciclamino competition and extending his lead in the points classification. Behind in the peloton, 78 kilometres remained. The gap was down. Caden Groves was suffering again with illness. But then this happened. A relatively quiet day for the peloton, but on a slippy descent as the rain started to come down, the Magliarosa Geraint Thomas went down. Roglic hitting the deck, Corvi the first man to go down, Sivakov injured too, but Tailgeg and Hart was the man, I'm afraid, who was out of the Giro d'Italia with injury. Oscar Rodriguez will also follow, Gagan Hart taken away to hospital, Rodriguez's injuries also looking rather worrying. The race continued, as it always does, and Jaco Alula were the ones to try and make it hard for the thicker leg sprinters. The breakaway still just about surviving. A few sprinters briefly distanced, but they'd get back on with 30 kilometers to go. There'd only be five kilometers remaining when the last man in the break was caught. That was Laurence Rex. And we were expecting a sprint finish. A crash behind with just under two kilometers to go took out Fernando Gaviria and a few others. Enoch Mulbrahan also hitting the ground. And those who'd survived at the front, with no GC differences given the crash was inside the last three kilometers, would then sprint it out. Peterson leading it out, Cavendish looking good. Ackerman reborn on the right hand side, Milan coming from nowhere, four coming to the line. It needed a photo finish though to separate Pascal Ackerman from Jonathan Milan. Cavendish in third, Peterson would take fourth. A big sprint. Cavendish looking brilliant, Peterson regular as ever, Milan the revelation of the Giro, but Ackerman winning a stage of the Giro for the first time since 2019. A superb result for the man who hardly has any team support at this race. Gibbons, the only man sent to look after him, did a fantastic job. And Ackerman top of the tree. Ackerman, Milan, Cavendish, Peterson and Oldani with Albanese, Mayrofer, Ballerini, Consoni and Marit in the top ten. Geraint Thomas in the Maglia Rosa again, but without the man who was third place. Theo Gegenhart having crashed out and gone to the hospital. So it's now Thomas two seconds in front of Roglic, Almeida at 22, Lechnerson in fourth, Caruso, then Kemner, Dunbar and the rest in the top 10. The GC really gets going now in terms of terrain to challenge. A tricky stage, a lumpy stage and going to Rivoli for stage 12 before the high mountains await from Friday onwards. One hundred and seventy nine kilometers with the late Colle Braida making perhaps terrain for those who want to attack and move up in the GC. The Giro d'Italia continues. There's been lots of drama on and off the bike in the last few days. Let's see if the GC fight really lights up with a good racing we all want to see.